we're leaving Lazaruto, Lavi. What do you have oh, to yeah. say? Yeah, it was lovely. Nice time. Mm -hmm. A couple of days. Nice. Hey? Nice. Jackie, what you say? Do you enjoy the crabs? Mm -hmm. Captain Bitchy, what do you say? All good? Yeah? All good. Have a look here. Out to the surf. We were scheduled to leave at 10 p.m. in the evening on the 31st of October, but we decided that 1500 hours on the 31st, which was a Saturday afternoon, it was better to leave to go out through the mouth in the sea in the daylight before the dark set in. We motored out through the mouth, uh, which was reasonably uh, safe. There wasn't that big of waves, there were some swells. And once we got out to open sea, we raised the main and jib. Um, once the jib was up and the main was up, we basically um, picked up the wind on a beam reach and we started sailing. Uh, quite well, we put out the fishing rods to hopefully catch something. At about uh, 1 a.m. on the first night, the wind increased, so we had to reef the main. And uh, at the end of day one, we had managed to do 144 nautical miles. the wind was pretty consistent well that had moved more to the after the boat so it was a broad reach so we pulled down the sails and put up the spinnaker and we sailed mostly with the spinnaker and the late afternoon we basically got some big fish we don't know what it was but we lost everything including the lures the whole lot and at about uh, four in the afternoon the wind was light so we basically ran the engines three hours on each engine and then we'd shut it down and start the other engine to do some motor sailing. The evening was very uneventful and basically the day two ended us doing 117 nautical miles. Day three, we motor sailed in the light winds in the early morning. And late in the afternoon, going into the evening, we had quite a few ships passing us. And uh, just before sunset, we managed to catch a nice yellowfin tuna. And we were still going on day three on the spinnaker. Um, end of day three, we had done 137 nautical miles.
day four we basically got close to the shore and up against the southern current which was really pushing strongly so we needed to add power from the motors so we to give us some forward propulsion so even though we slowed down on our boat speed we used the motor with the sails to keep us speed up um, so that we could actually make some make some distance in the late afternoon we caught a nice uh, queen mackerel and then we caught another one within 10 minutes of that so basically we loaded two before sunset um, day four basically ended with us doing 103 nautical miles Day five, which was our last day, which started in the morning. Um, we sailed through until one o'clock in the morning. And one o'clock in the morning, we arrived at Ile de Mozambique and we followed the channel markers all the way in and then we could anchor off the side of the pier. This was our final part of the journey and it was 73.7 nautical miles. Ile de Mozambique, as it's called in Portuguese, is a very historic part of Mozambique. In fact, the island is, is where the name Mozambique comes from. Originally, it was a sultan on the island, which was called Ali Musa Mbiki, is the, the man's name that was a sultan of the island. And this was in the days of Vasco de Gama, so we're talking the 1500s, that he was the sultan on the island. Fresh stuff, Mike. Uh-huh. Lots. Quanto é, pá? Está a fazer as contas. <risos> ah, calor! <risos> The fort, which is called Da uh, São Sebastião, was actually built in the 16th century by the Portuguese. And when this when this fort was built, this became the capital of Mozambique at that stage. And uh, once the fort was built, obviously that was where the Portuguese controlled it from. chapel uh, which was built in about 1522 
um, is considered one of the oldest European buildings in the southern hemisphere. What is interesting about this chapel is that this chapel, as you can see from the pictures, is right at the edge of the fort. And all the captains of the ships used to come and pray here before their ships used to leave for India for safe passage. There is a professor of archaeology and his wife that are in Ile de Mozambique that are doing all the work on the slave ships um, in the, on the island and around the islands. And Ricardo and Yolanda took us for a tour and showed us all of the work they're doing, including a listing of 25 of the known ships to date that were carrying slaves to and from the area. We spent a wonderful eight days at Ile de Mozambique, but it was time the wind had turned for us to carry on our journey heading north towards Tanzania. If you like this video, please subscribe and click the like button so you can see future episodes.